Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Nvidia released a new GPU, Intel fixed their issues, Nvidia comes back at AMD, the GPU shortage is beginning to end, and Ryzen 7000 is amazing. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, like the leak suggested, Nvidia's 12GB RTX 3080 is official. Also like the leak claimed, it comes with 8960 CUDA cores, 12GB of GDDR6X memory across a 384-bit bus, and a higher TDP of 350 watts. The boost clock remains the same as the regular 3080, but oddly enough, the base clock has gone down a bit to 1.26 GHz. When it comes to price, well, Nvidia didn't give us an MSRP. And because they won't be selling a Founders Edition card, AIB partners are the only way to get one. And according to some listings from EVGA, it's not cheap. You can see that we're looking at nearly double the MSRP of the 3080. And they're actually sold out. Yeah. Even at these prices, they're selling out. So of course, most gamers will have a tough time finding one at a reasonable price. Though I do have some good news on that in a few. With that said, given GPUs are basically worth their weight in gold at this point, it's time to do what I do and use the free tool with this video sponsor. Honey, or wait, no, the digital one that actually saves you money. Basically, Honey scours the internet for promo codes and applies them when you shop online. It's really that easy. Just install Honey in two clicks at joinhoney.com slash gamermelt. Shop like you normally would and you save money for free. Honey actually saves users a whopping 18% on average. Whether you're ordering pizza, buying PC parts, it doesn't matter. Honey supports thousands of your favorite sites. And did I mention it's free? Free? I'd say that makes Honey pretty sweet. Basically, there's no reason not to use Honey. So visit joinhoney.com slash gamermeld to start saving money today. And a huge shout out to Honey for sponsoring this video. Next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that right around the time Intel released their 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, the company shared a list regarding compatibility issues with certain games. Basically, there was an issue with certain DRM not playing nicely with Intel's new hybrid architecture. I'm talking games as new as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, along with quite a few other titles. At the time, one workaround was to completely disable the E-Cores, but obviously that's a major issue given that's a ton of performance to just turn off. Well, according to an update on that support page, Intel has cleared up all known issues. Meaning, if you were holding off to buy one of Intel's new CPUs, you should be fine now. Of course, it doesn't guarantee there isn't a game or two that Intel missed, but if so, hopefully those will be cleared up as well. Next up, it looks like Nvidia is already responding to AMD's Radeon Super Resolution announcement, as they just announced a new tech set to come with their next game-ready driver on January 14th. It's called DLDSR, and it's at this point that I'm gonna need a spreadsheet to keep up with all these acronyms. DLSS, FSR, RSR, XESS, it hurts. But that aside, while DLDSR is likely a response to AMD's RSR, it is quite a bit different. Instead of an upscaling tech, DLDSR, or Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution, is a downsampling method similar to DSR. The difference is that DLDSR adds AI to DSR, which basically allows it to get sharper edges with regular DSR, but with basically no performance loss. You can see in the image they shared that DSR at four times is quite a bit sharper than the regular 1080p image, but there's a big drop in performance. Then when we move to DLDSR at only 2.25 times, it's even sharper, yet it's only a couple FPS lower. Basically, you can get much sharper images with little difference in performance. With that said, it uses Nvidia's Tensor Cores, so it'll only work on Nvidia GPUs use similar to AMD's RSR, and it likely only works on the 2000 and 3000 series cards given they have tensor cores. To turn on the tech, you simply go into the Nvidia control panel and choose the factor you want to downscale from. Ultimately, this should give a big improvement to older games. Next up, like I said, I do have some good news. According to a few different stories, the GPU shortage may finally be coming to an end. 
Starting things off, in a new article from Tom's Hardware, TrendForce claims that shortages for PCs were partially alleviated starting in November, and that the main thing holding it back now are SSD PCI Express 3.0 controllers and the transition to Intel's 12th gen parts. What's even better is that according to DigiTimes Asia and later by PC Gamer, GPU shipments are expected to rise by 10% throughout this year. Of course, that may not sound like much, but keep in mind that when we're talking to discrete GPUs, use, 10% is a huge number. And finally, NVIDIA's chief financial officer, Colette Kress, was recently speaking at the JP Morgan Auto Tech Forum, where she stated, quote, in the calendar year of 2022, we believe we'll be in great shape in terms of supply, being able to meet the demand that is out there. Basically, 2022 looks to be the year that gamers finally get a chance to buy a GPU. Of course, that won't come instantly, but given things continue on this path, GPU prices should begin to fall until potentially MSRP or even better happens before the end of the year. Fingers crossed. And lastly for today, during a recent discussion with AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, Anantech learned some really interesting details regarding their Ryzen 7000 CPUs. In the story, they asked Dr. Lisa Su about AMD's choice to use 5 nanometers, given smartphones have used the process since 2020, and parts using TSMC's 4 nanometer node are coming to market soon. Not to mention the fact that TSMC is expected to ramp the 3 nanometer node this year. In response, Dr. Lisa Su stated that the 5 nanometers that they're using is, quote, highly optimized for high performance computing. It's not necessarily the same as other 5 nanometer technologies out there. Basically, AMD is set to use a special 5 nanometer node that we haven't really seen yet, or at least the yields have gotten good enough to hit target frequencies. Either way, this isn't the same 5 nanometers you're used to. Not only that, but Anantech also mentioned Zen 4 using both 2D and 3D chiplets. Now, I originally thought this was just going over their tech, but Tech Power Up seems to think that means Zen 4 will have both 2D and 3D chiplets, meaning they could actually have two versions of Ryzen 7000. Of course, I'm not sure that's what was meant, but between that and AMD using a more optimized node, I'm definitely getting pumped for Ryzen 7000. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Ryzen 7000 or are you more pumped that you could finally be able to buy a GPU at a reasonable price? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!